Recently, there was one of the biggest surveys of Tesla owners' experiences driving an EV. How much battery degradation were they getting if they supercharged versus charging their car using a trickle charger or at home? And people said, well, there wasn't really any difference between either one. And surprisingly, if you supercharged, it didn't make much difference to your battery. However, some owners have said this isn't true. Some owners, in fact, have proven that battery degradation on a Tesla vehicle, whether that is with lithium ion phosphate batteries or NCA chemistry batteries, nickel cobalt and aluminium, it doesn't really actually make any difference. What matters the most to battery degradation is actually the way you charge it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. I've been following the Tesla. Uh, there's a Tesla high mileage forum on Facebook. I highly recommend you join that if you want to get an idea of how long Tesla battery packs last. People constantly post on there showing you their mileage. Someone just posted yesterday explaining that they had actually done 700,000 kilometers on a, it was an old Tesla Model S. I think it was from 2015 on the same battery pack. Nothing had been replaced. The car was the same, stock standard. It's amazing. But what is potentially even more amazing than this is a, well, YouTuber, I don't know if he goes by that, but he's got a YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description. Has 95% battery capacity in his EV after driving it for 135,000 miles. That's a long way. I mean, that's like 230,000 kilometers. 135,000 miles, 5% battery degradation. Now, he claims he has a secret. His secret that he uses in order to continue to maintain the battery health of his vehicle. And it doesn't come down to any tricks. It's something you can easily do yourself. Now, interestingly, this guy, as far as I can tell, has not replaced really anything of any significant nature on his car. I can't tell if he's actually um, replaced small things. He doesn't mention that, but he does say that he hasn't had to replace the motors or the battery pack. So no big expenditures after doing 230,000 kilometers. My last gasoline car that I had that I got rid of, it was actually lasted for me. It was a Japanese made car, Mitsubishi. Lasted till it had done 245,000 kilometers, at which point I needed to get some stuff fixed with it. I went to the mechanic, I said, what's it gonna cost? And he said, it's gonna cost you more to fix it than to buy a new one of these cars. Not a new one, but a used one that doesn't have these issues. Uh, I, had, I did get my car serviced fairly regularly, although how good those services were, I don't know. But my point here is, this Tesla has, it, it's driving as like a new car, even though it's been driven for a long distance which is a huge improvement. It's much, much better than the experience that I've ever had driving gasoline or petrol powered cars. But let me know what yours has been in the comments. Now, one argument people make is that they say, if you get an EV, then your battery pack will have to be replaced after eight years. This is completely patently false. If you get an EV with a proper battery management system, um, in other words, battery management that can actually, you know, keep the battery cool or keep it warm enough when you charge, and actually make it last by reading its diagnostics in order to change the temperature, basically affect the, uh, the long longevity of the battery pack, then your EV battery can last for a very, very, very long time. And we've seen that now from many, many thousands of owners of EVs. Now, the thing is, though, that there was a recent study done by Recurrent. That study said that 6,300 Tesla Model 3 owners said they still had 90% capacity in their battery packs after five years of usage. Some had more than that, some had less, but the average after five years was 90%. So the chances of going from 90% to say 40% in another five years are actually extremely unlikely. In fact, the guy that said he had done 700,000 kilometers on his vehicle, on his Tesla, he didn't just say it, he posted a photo of his dashboard, by the way, proving that he wasn't lying. He said he still had about, I think, 78% capacity in his battery pack after that distance, which is staggering. So what can you do? What did this guy do? What does he do to continue to keep his battery health so high? Well, his battery health is at 95%. It's only lost 5% after 135,000 miles because he charges it in a certain way. One, he has only used level one and level two chargers even though he has 2 million supercharger miles. So he can go to any supercharger and get free charging for the rest of his life, essentially 2 million miles. That's what, more than 3,200,000 kilometers of free charging from Tesla. 
Um, that's ridiculous. But what he does is he limits the charging to 80%. So when he charges to 80%, which is what Tesla recommend you do with an NMC chemistry battery or an NCA chemistry battery. So if you don't have a lithium ion phosphate battery pack, which Tesla says you can charge to 100% regularly, they recommend you only charge to 80%. That's what he's always done. And that he believes is the key secret to getting this incredible, incredibly low battery degradation after so many kilometers of driving. Now, the fact that he's at 95% today, in my opinion, means more than likely he'll be at maybe 75% after he's done double the distance. You're looking at, say, nearly 500,000 kilometers, maintaining 75% battery health. I've been saying on the channel a lot of times now, this whole myth that batteries get thrown in the rubbish is utterly ridiculous because the cost of those batteries on the recycling market is huge. So if you know of any EVs just sitting in the dump because the batteries are there or battery packs just sitting in the dump, go grab them right now. You can make so much money recycling them. The reason I say this is because there's a actual metals index for something called black mass. Black mass is just ground up battery packs. They just stick them in a shredder. That's black mass and it's worth a huge amount of money. In fact, 10,000 US dollars per ton. So considering a battery pack normally weighs around 500 kilos, now that means your battery pack, even if they just put it in a shredder, is worth 5,000 US dollars. Now, I'm not saying you should do that and probably will need to. The reality is a lot of these batteries will simply, simply be used after the car is basically um, finished as energy storage, uses energy storage for people's houses. This is going to be a huge wave of this happening. I mean, think about this, right? 2030, 2035, 2040, there's going to be millions and millions of cars where they've done, you know, a million kilometers. The car is basically so old, you don't really want to drive it anymore. The batteries are still fine. Those battery packs are huge and could easily run your house, you know, to the point where if you had solar, your energy would be free every day of the year. Anyway, the future is looking pretty amazing if you ask me, thanks to EVs and of course, renewable energy. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you. Bye-bye.